Oh, look at that. It's like a weird cancerous growth. Oh! oh. Yeah, there's no way that was that easy. I'm getting really nervous. This beautiful text this evening, we're gonna be working on the old Alice Chalmers. Really has been quite a nice day. We got probably our first inch of rain, I'd say, since uh, February, March sometime. And I got a little bit of free time this evening, so we're gonna work on this tractor. There's two things we gotta try to fix. The first is that this thing never actually gets up to operating temperature. I think I've accidentally parked it near the Mahindra one time too many. So I think the thermostat's closed. You know, it's stuck closed or whatever, so we gotta deal with that. The other thing, if you guys can see in there, the other thing is you can see all this wet oil that's everywhere in here. This is leaking probably from multiple places. So we're gonna try to clean this mess up and change out some gaskets. And since there's all that caked on wet looking oil up towards the bottom front of the engine, I think it might have lost its uh, front main seal, so I picked up a new one of those. However, I've not driven this thing around in probably two, three weeks at this point. So let's see if it will start. Do, do, do. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, so close. Let's try it with more choke. Oh, that's cool. See what we can do. green at one point. You know, originally my plan was to use the old farmer trick of uh, putting an old t-shirt in the funnel and then pouring this through it to filter it from any junk it picks up in the bucket and reusing it. Even I am not going to be reusing this. This is, yeah, that's really gross. So as opposed to when I was a middle school kid messing with old tractors, oh, oh these are gonna be a, a battle. Oh, doesn't help that my hands are coated in antifreeze so I can't really grip stuff. There we go. Yeah, so as opposed to when I was a kid in middle school messing with old tractors, I now have at least some money, enough so that when I take something apart like this and the, the hoses in it are all like mushroomed out on one end and they look all ancient and dry rotted and this one's squishy and this belt is all nasty and frayed, I can just do what I would like to do in any of these situations which is just to replace these things. We're not talking much money, maybe like 30 bucks for all three hoses and a fan belt. And um, and it's really, really cheap insurance. If, if at all possible, I like to replace things like this when I, when I tear into something, especially because we're already in here. You know, what are we really, what would we really be saving by reusing this? It gets to sit in the yard here and rot for another, ah, for another year or two. And then, uh, and it springs a leak in the field someday when I'm raking hay with this thing and trying to use it. It's just not worth it. Oh, look at that. It's like a weird cancerous growth. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness. Oh! It's like watching a pimple get popped. It's just, it's so disgusting, but you can't look away. 
Look at how deep that is. Wow. That has been like that for uh, at least three days. <laughs> This is the fan belt pulley, and as you can see, a rubber belt has managed to wear down this old school American steel. How many millions of revolutions does that take to happen? This is some real Grand Canyon forming stuff right here. Same thing with the cast iron on the bottom. Man, I, you know, I spent a lot of my childhood around farm animals and livestock and whatnot. So I think I'm used to seeing some pretty nasty things, but this is one of the most unsettling I guess that's not so bad. This is one of the most unsettling things I think I've ever encountered since I discovered the existence of fiat currency. Oh my goodness, look, there's a bolt under there. I didn't even know that bolt was. Now the big question is, is this thing gonna start or not? Because, uh, oh, gas has been on this whole time. Because <laughs> I have not started this thing in, I don't know, three, four months if I had to guess. Not since I pressure washed a square baler, which, I very thankfully no longer have whatever that was. Turned it on, right? Oh. It's not like it's not on the So I'm looking at this trying to figure out exactly what needs to happen and I think the first thing we have to do is get this pulley off of here. I look down that center section, I don't see anything that looks removable. So I think we have to remove it by removing that bolt and then trying to fit a puller on here. Now fun fact, see that design on the front right here? This is actually for a hand crank if a person ever needed to crank start the tractor. The crank goes in here and then there's a peg that goes this way and a peg that goes that way. And on the front of the machine, and on the front of the machine, you just pull up on the crank and it spins these pegs like this. When the engine starts, it goes like that and it spins the uh, crank loose so it doesn't, you know, spin or whatever. Not something you see on modern equipment, which I'm very thankful for. Oh, that probably hasn't moved in many decades. Oh. Just gotta keep going until we break something, I guess. Oh. Oh, sweet. That wasn't so bad. 
Worked on this tractor for a whole 90 seconds today without property damage. It's a good start. All right, I'll try to get this gear puller going on here. All right, so this is the gear puller that I use. It uh, looks kind of complicated, but honestly, it's not difficult at all to put together. There's the main bar here. There's this perpendicular threaded section, which of course pushes against what's hopefully the end of this crankshaft or else we're gonna shatter this thing. And uh, then we've got these little arms which grab onto whatever we're pulling and the stabilizer bar to keep them from spreading out, which is really nice because my old gear puller didn't have this. And for those that are wondering, this is the mighty 4534 OTC multi-purpose bearing and pulley puller set. I'm not affiliated with OTC, but I do really like this thing a lot. I think it was Mechanic Steve who turned me onto this. If I remember right, which maybe I don't, he has the same exact set. This thing was kind of pricey, but it's super good quality and every single time I use it, I'm glad I have it. I say that, I've talked it up. This thing better not fail me now. There's no way that it's loose already. Nah, things don't, things don't work this well. We're getting ready to have some major problems at this rate. You know, I really want to complain about how close quarters this is. I can only get like a little over a third of a turn of the wrench, but somehow I don't expect a lot of sympathy from you guys that work on cars and modern equipment. Yeah, there's no way that was that easy. I'm getting really nervous. 